And I want to read to you from verse 19. It's the story of the rich man and Lazarus. These are the words Jesus spoke. And I want you to listen very, very carefully, please. Are you ready? Verse 19. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, Remember that in your lifetime you received your good things. And likewise Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those pass from there to us. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house because I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. My Abraham said, Moses and he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, the one rise from the dead. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Now listen, this scripture I have just read came straight out of the mouth of Jesus himself. 
Jesus did not speak about hell to threaten people. No, 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 no. God threatens nobody. But Jesus spoke about hell to warn people. Mana, Jesus, there is a big difference between a threat and a warning. But Jesus never threatened. He always warned. So this scripture is a very solemn scripture. And this issue is a very serious matter. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Now let me start. And I want to start like this. Listen. When I hear the story you just heard tonight. About two men. One went to heaven and the other went to hell. I only have one question on my mind. Do you want to know what that question is? That question is this. I want to know what the terrible sin of the man was who went to hell. Can I tell you why I want an answer to that question? Do, do you want to know? I want an answer to this question because may God help me. I don't want to commit the same sin that man has done because I don't want to go to hell to join him. How many of you want to know what the mistake of that man was that damning sin that made him go to hell? Amen. Amen. Okay. What was the mistake of that rich man? He lived in complete luxury. Let's see if we can find a clue to his sin that took him to hell. Luke 16 verse 19. It says he was a rich man. My question to you. Do you think that man went to hell because he was rich? Yes or no? You are perfectly right. No, no, this man didn't go to hell because he was rich. And the poor man didn't go to heaven because he was poor. Say amen. Say amen. Let's see the next thing here. He clothed himself in purple and fine linen. This man believed in good clothes. Do you think that was the sin that made him go to hell? Yes or no? We all agree. Number three, it says in verse 19 that he fared sumptuously every day. That man believed in good food. They roasted an ox for him every day. And 12 chickens. He was a fat man. Because he ate and ate and ate and ate. Only the best. 
Do you think that that was the reason why he went to hell? No, you are right. No, 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 no. We thank God for our daily bread. Say amen. Yeah, amen. Okay. We have not yet found the sin that made that man go to hell. What was the sin? I, I come to it in half a minute. Jesus said, Jesus said, at the door of the rich man's house was a man called Lazarus. Lazarus was not, Mr. Lazarus was not only poor, he was also very sick. Jesus said he was covered with, with boils. These boils broke open and pus was flowing out. Then Jesus said something happened. Jesus was not in heaven. All in one night. No trouble. The poor man in front of the door died. The angels of God came and they carried him to heaven. Jesus said. The, Jesus said, the rich man inside the palace also died. And when the rich man closed his eyes on earth, he, 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 he opened his eyes in hell. It was a very short trip just in the just in the flash of a moment. Hey. And when the rich man was in the fires of hell, Jesus said, He looked up in his despair. And by way of a miracle, he could see right into paradise. And there he saw Father Abraham. And, and, and he saw Mr. Lazarus. That poor man, that poor, poor man. He saw Lazarus in the arms of Abraham being comforted. Hey. And then the conversation started between heaven and hell, between between the rich man in hell who was now a very poor man and Abraham in heaven. And the rich man cried from hell to heaven. Father Abraham, Abraham. sent Lazarus with one drop of water on his finger just to touch my lips. Abraham said, Abraham said, there is no road from here to down there and from down there to here. No yes, nobody can come up and nobody can go down. Hey. There is no salvation in hell. Shall I quickly tell you why there is no salvation in hell? Because Jesus did not die for our sins in hell. He died for our sins in this world. Hey. The conversation continued. And the rich man said, Father Abraham, if you can't help me, I have got five brothers who still live in the world and they also commit the very same sin that I have committed and which brought me to hell. And 
He said, please, let somebody rise from the dead. And visit my five brothers on earth. And knock on their doors and say greetings from your brother in hell. You better get saved. Now I come to tell you the sin of that man that took him to hell, okay? I will now speak about the worst sin a human being can commit. And if anyone commits the same sin, I guarantee you, you will go to hell. But tonight, I give you the answer that you may go to hell. Say amen. This was his sin. This was his sin. Suddenly we read here. When Abraham said to him in verse 29. No, no. I will send nobody from the dead to him. To your brothers, to your brothers. You will not get a graveyard preacher. He says they have Moses and they have the prophets. Let them hear them. He said they have the evangelists. They have the pastors. They have the prophets. They have the preachers of the gospel. Let them hear them. Tonight you are listening to one. And I say to you, congratulations. Hey. Then the man in verse 30 shouted from hell to heaven. No, Father Abraham. No, 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 no. Then the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. He said to me, In death, the rich man said no to Father Abraham. No, no. But in his life on earth, he said no to Jesus. And to say no to Jesus is the most serious sin a human being can commit. Madobola is Jesus if you say no to Jesus you got in your pocket a ticket to hell to say no to Jesus is so dangerous that's why I want to beg you and plead with you for your soul's sake. Say yes to Jesus. Say yes, Lord Jesus. I say yes, 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 Lord Jesus. Come to me. What, what was wrong with you? I have a stent that he had. So I was operated in the Autopathy Hospital in Nugu. Later, I was working well, small, small, but later, around 90s, from uh, 2000, it started to worry me much. I cannot work without crutches. So now I'm working little, little with crutches now. Hey! 
Give us a demonstration. Give us a demonstration. Ha -ha. Hey. Amen. Look at him. Give me your crutch. Run in Jesus' name. Run, 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 run. Come back again. Run. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you happy? I'm happy. You will no more need this crutch. Who has healed you? Jesus. Are you happy people of Umo here? Not a blessed I thank you for perfect health. Which I was blind. This one, this is right one. So, when, when did you receive your healing? I received my healing yesterday night. I, every time I did, fear they fill up my heart. Yesterday I enjoy. When I sleep, I can't sleep. I they dream, bad dream. They go bush. They go everywhere. Water, water, river. But now, yesterday, if I want to sleep, I go to cry. Now close, close your left eye. Close the left. Do what I do. Hallelujah! The cripples walk and the blind see. I bless this mama in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus. Is it true that your son was blind? Yes, sir. Around two years when I delivered him, he was normal. About two years' time, his eyes, cataract covered the two eyes. One of them closed like this. And at uh, 2000 Gonkert, Lagos, I carried him there. He received his sight. And look at him now. It's perfect. 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 Can you see me? Yeah, he's a beautiful boy. Yes, God. Lord, I thank you that you have touched this boy. You removed his cataracts. He has got perfect eyes. Let him grow up to become a man of God. I bless this boy. I bless these children. And I bless this mother who has come with great faith. What was wrong with you? I have a kidney failure. Since then, I'm, I, I'm afraid to eat. So this time around, the, I've been going to many hospitals without healing. But yesterday, I sleep without uh, drugs, sleeping drugs. Every day, I used to sleep with sleeping drugs. But yesterday, I slept and I eat yesterday. So that's why I know that I'm okay. Kemba Honile. Hallelujah. Naba isn't that wonderful? Are you happy? I can feel Jesus is healing many more sick people right now. Jesus Right now, right now. Now, after you have seen what you have just seen, I'm sure you are convinced that Jesus is on a big salvation spree. He has said that he will save anyone who comes to him. He said, he said, whosoever comes to me, I will under no circumstances refuse. And he will now accept you if you come to him how do you come to him you come to him in prayer remember I spoke about that arrow I spoke about the target there is coming a correction into your life salvation will come to you whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and I'm going to lead you in that prayer of salvation which is my great great privilege but Jesus himself will answer it correct your life 
so that you will find that glorious and that eternal target. Just pray together with me. Repeat this prayer by letting your heart truly call on Jesus. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I surrender all. Forgive my deviations. Forgive me my sins. I want to find you this very moment. And I want to connect with your eternal purpose for my life. Holy Spirit, I pray that you, as you convicted me of sin, you may convict me also of righteousness. I believe with my heart what I speak with my mouth. Jesus has forgiven my sins, cleansed me with his blood, and made me righteous in him. I believe it and receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen.